Hey guys, this is Pastor Dante Banks. I'm the pastor of the God Chasers Community Church, and I'm so grateful that you clicked on to this message because this message right here is life changing. This message right here will change your life if you honor and listen to the call that is on your life. I'm telling you, nothing will stop you. Nothing will hold you back. Not even grave clothes will keep you in the grave. Tune in right now. In fact, whatever you're doing, stop doing it. You got to be quiet. You got to listen. You got to focus. Somebody's calling you. God bless you. First Samuel chapter 3. I'm going to read just a, just a little bit because we're going to move along. Amen. Amen. I wanna, I'm going to start at verse 2. And it, and it happened that Eli was laying down in his place. By now his eyesight had begun to grow dim and he could not see as well as he used to be able to see. And the lamp of God had yet not gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And then the Lord called him. Thank you, Jesus. And then the Lord called him. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we love you. We give you honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. High five somebody and say, the Lord called him. The Lord called him. You can take your seats. You can take your seats. Man, hang, hang out. Amen. Amen. Come on, man. Uh, Mark is play too much. Um, so, so what we have here, and I'll, I'll expedite the story just a little bit. Um, for those who you, you, you who have chicken in the oven, I'll get, I'll get you get you home to that chicken, man. Get you home. Are the Cowboys playing today? That's what it is, right there. Y'all trying? To, I feel a spirit of anticipation. <laughs> so. So, so what is happening is we have this young man named Samuel. Now Samuel will go on to be the prophet of the Lord. He will be the priest of the house. He is the prophet of the house, amen. He is the prophet of all the children of Israel. But right now he's just a little boy. He's just a little boy. He's just a little boy. I have a problem. I, I have a problem when you call boys princes. I have a problem when you call a boy a prince. Uh, a, a son of a king is not a prince. The son of a king is a king in waiting. Because as soon as daddy dies, he's the king. If he's eight when daddy dies, he's still the king. If he's 17 when daddy dies, he's still the king. He, he, is, he has heirship to a throne. And so you have to watch what you say about somebody or what you call somebody before they get into the position that God will have for them. Boy, that's a side note for you. You got to watch how you talk to somebody before they get into the position. Sometimes Some people you disrespect and then you mess around and find they get a crown. So... Samuel is uh, laying on the floor in the church, in the synagogue. He would lay on the floor. And he has this, he has this, uh, this pastor named Eli. Now, Eli used to be the man. He was the man. But at this point, his, the Bible says that his eyes were dim. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, somebody's calling me. So, Eli... <laughs> Eli used to be the man, and, 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 he, and he, he is still the man because he hears from God. He, he, the Bible said he's blind now. He doesn't have any vision. He can't see the future. He can't see what's about to happen. He can't see what's out there, but he can still hear. The Bible said the lamp hasn't gone out in his life. Even when your, even when your boss at your job can't see, you got to serve him because of the lamp. Even when the pastor at your church doesn't have vision, you got to serve him because of the lamp. Even when the pastor over the section that you serve in, you got to serve them because of the lamp. And so Samuel would serve him because the lamp of the Lord had not gone out in his life. And so Samuel will find, found himself on the floor in the sanctuary. And he would fall asleep there. And one night as he fell asleep, he heard a voice. Samuel, Samuel. Now Samuel must have been a soft sleeper because I would have heard that and I would have slept on. I would have slept on. I would have kept on sleeping. But Samuel heard that voice and he jumped up. He jumped up and he went to Eli. He said, hey Eli, 
I heard you call me. What's up, man? I'm here. What's up? What do you need? I'm here. And Eli, you know, like cold as I Boy, I didn't call you. Go back to sleep, man. It's, it's only 3 a.m. or whatever. I don't know. They didn't have time like that. So. It was dark. It's still dark. Okay. So he's, he so he sends him back. He says, he says, go back to sleep. Samuel goes and he goes back to sleep. And as he lays down again. Samuel. Samuel hops up. Man, I know I heard something. It must be Eli. He runs over to Eli. Now, notice that the voice of God sounds like Eli to Samuel. You can draw your own conclusions from that. What does the voice of God sound like to you? Okay, so he runs over to Eli again, his pastor, and he says, Hey, what up, what up, man? You called me. And Eli again, he's like, man, I'm tired. You keep waking me up. I did not say anything to you. Go back to sleep. And this happens a couple of times. In fact, it happens three times. And on the third time, Samuel goes in that room and he says, Eli, man, stop playing, man. I'm tired. I'm, stop playing. What's going on? And, and Eli looks at Samuel and says, he says, listen, the next time you hear it, say this. Say Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The next time you hear this voice, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Now, now, some translations, one of my favorite translations, the Living Bible, it says this. It says, when the next time you hear that voice, say this. Say, yes. Say yes. Say yes. What if, what if, what if, what if, what if every time you heard the voice of the Lord, you just said yes. Lord, I don't know what you want. I don't know what you're asking me for. But yes, you've been too good to me. You've been too kind to me. And I'm too great. Yes, God. Whatever you want to do in my relationship. Yes. Whatever you want to do in my children. Yes. Whatever you ask of me at any given time, my answer will be yes. Yes. And, and, and so today I want to talk to somebody, and it might not be a lot of people in this room, but I want to talk to somebody who has heard that calling. No matter what you do, you can just be working on your job and you hear it. Samuel. You work, if you're working on your job and you hear somebody call Samuel and your name's not Samuel, run. You should hear your name. <laughs> but there, but there, there's, there is somebody in this room that no matter what you're doing in your life, you hear that calling. You hear your calling. You've tried to ignore it. You've tried to get past it. You've done all sorts of things. And, you, and you've tried to mute that voice in your life. And today, I want to talk to the person who says, Pastor Dante, no matter what I do, I keep trying to go to sleep. I keep trying to ignore it, but I hear somebody's calling me say somebody's calling me yeah everywhere i go every, everything i try to do I, I i feel like god is calling me to something else i'm never i feel i don't I, I don't ever feel like i'm in the right place i don't ever feel like i'm in the right position i feel like god is always calling me calling me and i'm trying to just live and be regular and do regular stuff like regular people but god keeps telling me i'm not regular for some reason there's something irregular about the way he treats me and everywhere i go i just hear him Calling me. Hear some. Somebody's calling me. Okay. I'll answer it later. Okay, so I want to talk today to the people who feel like somebody's calling them. Say somebody's calling me. So, so, so this is what happens. Uh, I, I love this because the Bible says this. He says, my sheep hear my voice. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. And when we, we say the word hear, but hear doesn't mean hear, hear. Hear means my sheep recognize my voice. See, some of us hear voices, but that's not what. That's not the voice of God. <laughs> you, You'll recognize when the voice you hear is the voice of God. And so today I want to talk to the people who, not just the people who are hearing voices, but the people who hear the voice of God. Amen? Amen. So I have a few facts about calling. Can I just deal with this for a second? 
Okay, the first thing I want to say is uh, 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 you can only deal with one call at a time. You can only deal with one call at a time. Some of us, some of us are answering callings on this level. We're calling to drink. We're calling to smoke. We're calling to do, uh, to, to fulfill the lust of my flesh. And you can only answer one calling at a time. And since God is a gentleman, he'll just sit on hold. He'll just sit on hold until you are done answering the call. And so today I want to just talk to the people who are thinking maybe I should answer this call. Can I, can I deal with that for a little while? I want to deal with your ignorances today. Ig ignorances are just things you might have ignored. And so what, what's happening is since you are answering the call here, you are ignoring the call here. Since you are answering a low call, you are ignoring the high call. Are y'all with me this morning? I'm not going to be before y'all long. I need y'all to get this. Some of us are answering low callings. You're answering low callings. But there is a high calling on your life. And I can't deal. I can't play around with all these low callings. I can't play around with these low situations. With these low relationships. You can't even claim me. Well, you, know, you know, baby. We don't need any labels. You know what I mean? We just... I mean, we're just kicking it, you know. Them. No, 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 no. That's low. That's low, gentlemen. That's low. I, I, I'm all about the high calling. I was telling the 10 o'clock, I don't know where this fits into my message, but I, I said, some of y'all need to be brunch ladies instead of dinner ladies. People need to call you for brunch. You want to go out with me? Let's go at 11.30 a.m. We're not going out to IHOP at 11.30 p.m. Okay. Uh, so, so I want to talk to you about some of the things that you might be ignoring that are making you ignore the call. Are y'all with me? The first thing is this. Uh, we ignore the gifting. If you ignore the gifting, then you'll always ignore the call. See, there is gifting inside of you. God says, before I formed the world, I knew you. Before the foundations of the world, I knew you. And I predestined you. That means I put something in you that destiny could only reveal from you. And so I'm waiting till you get to... I'm waiting till you get from where you were to where you are supposed to be so I can reveal the thing that I placed. I predestined you. I predestined you. Before the foundations of the world, I put something in you that would only be relevant in your present. I prepared something that would be Pre that would be preferable for your presence. And so you keep trying to figure out, hey, when is God going to bless me? Or when is God going to do it? But all you need to know is that he is going to do it because he predestined to do it. He predestined, he proposed that he would prepare something for my present. Well, I'm trying to help y'all today. And so, and so what I'm waiting for is the moment when God reveals what he put inside of me. I'm just waiting for the expression. See, most of us, uh, most of us don't recognize the calling on our life because we don't recognize that there is a gift on the inside of us. But if you knew that there was a gift on the inside of us, it, it, I'm sorry, y'all. Somebody's calling me. Hit um, ignore again. Um, the person who's calling me. Okay, so what we do uh, oftentimes, we don't recognize the gift that is on in the inside of you. But if God is calling out to you, it's because he has placed something on the inside of you. And what he's saying is, I won't back what I put on the inside of you. There's something great on the inside of you. And you've just been moseying along on this low level. You've been moseying along on a low place thinking you belong there. When God knows you don't belong there, there's something greater on the inside of you. And God's saying, I want it back. What I put inside of you, I want it back. If, I... if you knew that you had something on the inside of you, you would have some different behaviors. The first thing is you wouldn't be begging for anything. 
The Bible says that I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. If you knew that you had something on the inside of you, then it would cause you to never have to beg anybody from anything from anybody look i love you i'm cool with you but i don't need nothing from you because what god has placed on look i'm all good with this hey, thank you so much for the help that you did give me but really i don't need anything from you i i i don't have to beg for anything and sometimes i believe that either god miswrote that scripture or he haven't seen your facebook status because it looks like begging to me So, God said, I, I, I never seen the righteous forsaken you know, or see you begging. If you knew what was on the inside of you, you wouldn't have to beg for attention. You wouldn't have to beg for somebody to compliment you. You wouldn't have to beg. Y'all know what I'm telling y'all. Stop begging. There's something greater on the inside of you. Look, it's not on the outside. It's not on the outside of you. It's on the inside of you. But you got to know how to stop. Man, we got to cut that out the video. I don't think. You begging. Said I never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed thirsty. They who hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. But if you hunger and thirst after. You're going to be hungry again. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> I never seen the righteous forsaken or the seed begging, but get this, get this, get this. If, if you don't have to beg, then you also don't have to be begged. You don't have to be begged to be nice to people. You don't have to be begged to be kind to people. You don't have to be begged to serve at your church. You don't have to be begged to be a part of something great. I don't have to be begged for anything. That's something that wakes me up in the morning. That's something that draws me out my bed. And it's not you. I love you. You are so cute and wonderful. But God is calling me every single morning. Every time I get a chance to just get a little bit of rest, I can't rest because God is calling me. He said, I got I got something for you. I got something greater for you. And Dante, if you just get up, I'll show you what I have for you. God is calling me. Is God calling anybody in here? I woke up at five. I woke up at five o'clock this morning. I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Some of y'all woke up at three o'clock this morning, but you went back to sleep. Four o'clock, you went back to sleep. Five o'clock, you went back to sleep. And now you're tired and you're restless and you do this every night. But it's, what's happening is you're ignoring the call. There's a phone ringing in your house. There's a phone ringing in your bedroom. There's a phone ringing when you're driving a car. You can turn up 98.5 as loud as you can, but you still hear that ringing. God saying, I'm calling, calling you. And people who are called don't have to beg, but they also don't have to be begged. Just know, God bless you. I'm not going to beg you to do it. <laughs> people who are calling refuse to be distracted. It's, it's, not that I, it's not that I'm ignoring other things. It's just that they don't overwhelm or overrule the calling that's on my life. So I cannot be distracted, Marcus. I can't just ignore what God is saying to deal with you. I, I'd love to talk you through it. I really would. But there's something that's calling me forward. I'd love to stay in this relationship with you, but... Somebody's calling. Somebody's calling me. And eventually, I, I, I'm going to have to stop ignoring that call and just... Hello? Hello? Hello, God? What do you need from me? What can I do for you? It is your servant. Whatever you have for me. Oh, thank you, John. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Speak, Lord, for your servant is... I can't keep ignoring your call. I've lived 25, 32, 45 years and I've ignored the call. But God is saying, hey, here's the season. Here's the moment. Somebody's calling me. Somebody's calling me. But get this, I can only deal with one call at a time. So will you accept his call? The next thing we ignore is position. We ignore position. We ignore position and so we ignore the call. 
We ignore the position we are in and we say, this place where I am, I'm comfortable. This is the place where God would have me to be and I'm comfortable right here. But when God calls you, he'll always call you to a higher place. Say that, a higher place. Whenever God calls you, he's always calling you up. He's not calling you to some mess. He's not calling you to some ugly stuff. He's always calling you up. I would uh, venture to say, if you're being called down, you're being used by the enemy. You got to be called up. That's why you can't just call me talking about any old thing. Because I'm a hang up. Because I'm called up. Does that make sense? I'm called up. I'm called to a new level. To a new place in God. And where I'm trying to go, I can't have old things. Pulling me down, dragging me down. I got to be called up. See, understand something. There is something called appointment. And we talk about appointment in church all the time. We talk about God, what God will do at an appointed time when an appointment happens. And it's my appointment and it's my season. I love when people say that. It's my season. If you say that, it's my season. If you say that, get this. If you say that, what you are saying is there's going to come a time where it's not my season. If it is my season, because seasons are temporal. Appointments are temporal, but assignments are permanent. I tell people, stop talking about seasons and start talking about climates. You got to understand that I want to be in a different climate. I don't want to just be in a new season, because if I'm in a new season, then seasons are cyclical. Seasons are cyclical. So if I'm in this season now, it's only a matter of time when I come back around and I'm going to be back in this season. I want to get out of this place, out of this position, and be in a new position and have a new climate. People who live in San Diego, they don't worry about the summer because they don't have seasons. It always looks the same. The weather's pretty much always the same there. They go to the beach in December because they're not worried about seasons. They're worried about climate. Sometimes you got to change the weather. I was talking in the morning service today. They, they came in a little down today. I think it was because it was some overcast. But you got to understand that even clouds are temporal. Clouds are temporal. They're not firm. Can you hold a cloud? No. Can you stand on a cloud? It's temporary. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not meant to be permanent in your life. And if the right gust of wind comes, yeah. if the right wind comes, it'll blow those clouds from over your life. Some of y'all been worshiping a rain cloud. <laughs> Calling is relative to assignment. Assignment is greater than appointment. Do y'all understand that? Can we, can we leave that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So understand this. Listen, listen. Get this. You'll always remain on the level that you respond to. Yeah. If you respond to it, the Bible says it like this. It says, let the deep call upon the deep. Yeah. Let, the, let the new level, oh, thank you, Jesus. Let the new level call to the people who are thirsty to go to a new level. Yeah. Or people that are hungry to go to a new level. If you, if you are satisfied... On a low level. Wow. If you satisfy with minimum wage, that's all you're going to ever make. Wow. Wow. If you satisfy for working for your boss instead of being your boss, you're always going to work for your boss. You got to understand that. You got to be, it's got to be something, a holy dissatisfaction on the inside of you that this is, right now, this is an appointment, but this is not my assignment. I'm assigned to run this whole place. I'm assigned to run this whole, you don't have any idea. I'm just appointed to the mailroom right now. I'm assigned to be the CEO here. God didn't send me here so I can shuffle mail. But I'll do it for a season. I'll do it for a season until God, God calls me to a higher season. Are y'all with me? Are y'all with me? You got to understand. You got to be. Thank you, Jesus. You got to understand that it's time to move to a new place. You need to hear a voice that says it's time to move to a new place. It's time, it's time, it's time, it's time, Michelle. It's time to move on, Tabitha. It's time to move on. It's time to, it's time to move on. You got to feel it in your spirit. Come here, Carrie. She cheated because she know what to do. This is happening this morning. Why did she come? Why did 
why she come? And I'm not going to church for nothing. I'm not doing this stuff for nothing. I'm not just playing around. It's, it's not, I, I love my church. I love the people in there. But I, co I come because he's calling me. It's not arbitrary. There's something. There's something. There's a voice. And that voice is calling me. And no matter what I do, no matter where I go, for some reason I am drawn to his voice. Now, be clear about something. She has to recognize my voice. Yeah. She has to recognize my voice. No, number one, we ignore the call because we ignore the gifting. Number two, we ignore the call because we ignore the position that we're in. Number three, we ignore the call because we don't recognize the voice. See, see, she came because she knows my voice. If people call her all the time. She don't go. <laughs> Hear me right here. Right, right. Don't even think about it. If you're in the house, see me first. But anyway. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But understand something. It's the voice. The voice matters. The voice matters. Say that. The voice matters. The voice matters. See, she understands that if I call her, I must have some reason for her to come. I must have something for her. Or she might have something for me, but she understands my voice. And so she moves. The Bible says my sheep hear my voice. And so you've been wondering. Huh? You've been wondering why you feel like you got, oh, I just got to go to church today. I don't know why. It's just something about today. I don't know. I, I, I haven't been in like two months. I don't even know if they're still in that same location. But I got to go there. The voice is calling me. And you have to respond to the voice. And, and, and see, what she knows, what she knows is if she responds to the voice, then this is also the voice of blessing for her. This is also, it's not just the voice of authority, it's the voice of blessing for her. Uh, um, understand this, men, married men, you got to be the voice of blessing and the voice of authority. If you are only the voice of authority and not the voice of blessing, your voice is going to start to be ignored. Y'all with me? Okay, have a seat, please. Uh, thank you so much. I'll give it to you later. I bless you. Huh? I'm in I'm Cross my heart. I'm going to give you a, the biggest hug you ever had. <laughs> We ignore the voice. See, the voice matters. Say that. The voice matters. You can, anybody can just call you, but the voice that calls you matters. It matters. I want to hear my daddy's voice call me. I don't want I don't want to just answer to any old calling from any old person. I, I got to answer to the calling that's on my life from my father. And I got to recognize the authority that's on his voice. Jesus had a friend. He had a best friend. His name was Lazarus. And he would go to Lazarus' house and he would hang out and he would party with Lazarus. But one day while Jesus was away, they sent him a text. Yeah. Sprint. They sent him a text. And he, uh, and he, they said, Lazarus, your boy, he's sick, man. And he's going to die. Lazarus, your boy, is sick. And Jesus said this, Jesus said this, he said, he said, I'll deal with Lazarus when I get there. Yeah. He said, I'm going to hang out here for a couple more days and I'll deal with Lazarus when I get here. Let, let me help you with something else. If Jesus hasn't answered your prayer, it's because he wants to do a greater miracle in your life. If Jesus hasn't answered your first miracle, if he hasn't responded to your first text, he said, because it's not bad enough yet. Wait till it gets really bad and then I'm going to come through. I won't get any glory. I won't get any grace if I bring you out of this small thing. So I need you to endure this small thing until it gets big enough for me to get some glory out of it. Y'all don't. He says, I need you to endure this thing until it gets big enough for me to get glory out of it. I need you to endure this thing until it gets great enough for me to rescue you. And then you can tell everybody what God did. And then you can tell everybody how God brought you out. And then you can tell everybody. But right now, you can, you can endure this. So Lazarus, like Jesus knew, Lazarus ends up dying. And the Bible says that four days he was in the grave. Four days. He was in the grave by the time Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up to that place. They had buried Lazarus, man. They had buried him. They had wrapped, they mummified him. 
He was in grave clothes. They had mummified him and put him down in a tomb, down in a tunnel. How many people have buried you? How many people have said, no, nah, you, you don't have to worry about her. She's done. You don't have to worry about her. No, that's it. That's it. It's over for her. They down for the count. They've been knocked down. They TKO'd. And, 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 and what you're saying is, I'm just laying in this grave waiting to answer this call. I'm laying in the grave because Jesus is calling me. I'm not like everybody else. I'm not in the same position everybody else is in. And even though you think I'm dead, I'm yet alive. All I'm doing is waiting to answer the call. Jesus has a call all of my life he has predestined me before the foundations of the earth the bible said he sanctified me that means he set me apart that means he set me apart that means i'm not like you and all your life you've been trying to fit in all your life you've been trying to fit into a certain place to a certain box all your life you've been trying to fit in and god wouldn't let you fit in he said because i got something greater for you but if i let you fit in you won't seek it you won't seek after it you won't listen for the voice so i need you to get into a place where you listen for the for the voice that somebody calling you somebody calling Lazarus is laying in that grave. The Bible says he's been there for four days. His own sister said, he's so dead, Tam. She said, he's so dead, he stink. Family members won't deal with you no more. Won't even invite you to the dinner. He's so dead, he stink. He's been dead for so long. He's been dead for so long that he stinks. But you don't understand. I, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for somebody to call me. The Bible says Jesus showed up. And this was such a sad scene that Jesus wept. Now, I have some theories about that. I don't have a lot of time to go into it. But just know that Jesus didn't weep weep because Lazarus was dead. Because he knew what he was about to do with Lazarus. I believe in my heart that he was weeping because nobody believed. I believe in my heart that he was weeping because nobody there. All these people have been walking with me. All of them have seen me do miracles. All of them have seen me do extra stuff. But because nobody believed, I believe that Jesus cried. How many of you have seen a miracle? have seen God do it for somebody else because if he did it for Danette he'll do it for you if he did it for Tiffany he'll do it for you God is not a respecter of person he's a respecter of faith is there anybody in here who can believe for a miracle I'm just looking for one person I believe that Jesus was just looking for one person to connect with one person to put his hand with and the Bible says where two or three agree nothing shall be impossible nothing shall be impossible I believe Jesus wept because there was no agreement is there anybody who can be in agreement right now that Lazarus will live So the Bible said Jesus wept. But I love it didn't say Jesus kept on weeping. Jesus kept on crying. Jesus kept on. Sometimes you got to wipe your tears and stand up. Sometimes you got to wipe your tears and stand up. Some of you have been crying for a long time over some old stuff. And God's saying this is the season right now. I'm about to resurrect but you gotta wipe your tears and so the Bible says Jesus stop weeping you gotta come a season where you stop weeping weeping man do it for a night joy comes in the morning the Bible said Jesus look down into that cave and I love that he didn't go into the cave because sometimes you got to come out of bad sometimes you got to come out of your cave situation 
You got to come. You got to hear the voice of God and come out of your cave. All the time, Jesus is not going to go down into the cave with you. He said, he said, he said, I'm going to stand right here and I'm going to call you to where I am. And where I am, you shall be also. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'm going to call you forth to where I am. And Jesus looked down into that cave. He looked down into that bad situation. He looked down into that old relationship. He looked down into that bad marriage. He looked down into three divorces. He looked down into messed up kids. He looked down into drug addiction. He looked down into alcoholism. He looked down into that bad situation. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. He looked down into fornication. He looked down into adultery. He looked down into that ugly, the messy thing. And he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. forth." And I know some of y'all, Lazarus is a messed up name, but I need you to insert your name right there because I hear him calling. Jerry, come forth. Tiffany, come forth. Timothy, come forth. I hear him calling Bridget, come forth. Connie Williams, come forth. Brene Tommy, come forth. He's calling you forward. He's calling you forward. He's calling you forward. He's calling you forward. forward. Amar, come forward. Roxanne, come forward. What I have for you is so much greater than where you are. What I have for you is so much greater than your current situation. But I'm going to stand out here and I'm going to call you to me. And where I am, you shall be also. And the Bible said that through the midst of the ugliness and the silence, and the fog and the dejectors and the detractors and the people who said you were never going to do it or you never going to make it you were never going to be nothing anyway because your daddy wasn't nothing and your mama ain't nothing and some, some of those people they looked down into that grave and they saw old Lazarus coming out of that grave the Bible said he still had his grave clothes on he was still mummified but he's coming out I'm still addicted to drugs, but I'm coming out. I'm still addicted to sex, but I'm coming out. I'm still lost in a fornicated relationship, but I'm coming out. I'm not stuck in that anymore. If I gotta, if I gotta scratch or crawl or do the worm, whatever I gotta do, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this grave. I'm coming out of this place. I've been in bondage too long. I've been in bondage too long. I'm coming out. Even if I gotta take baby steps. See, my education, they tied my feet together in, the, in my elementary school. They tied my feet together. I never thought, I never saw what I could be. I never saw what I could become. I, I went to junior college, my feet are tied together. But all I can do is just take a couple steps. If I can just scoot, if I can inch my way, if I can just, if I can just muster up enough strength to hear the calling because Jesus is calling me. He's calling me. He's calling me. And listen, I can't see him. Just like Eli, I'm blind. I hear him. I hear him. I hear him calling me. I don't know. I don't know how I'm supposed to do it. I don't know what a 501c3 is. I don't know how to get a building application. I don't I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't even really know where I'm supposed to go. But I know one thing, Jesus is calling me. I don't know how to start a prayer club at my school. I don't know how to I don't know how to engage my friends about their relationship with God. I don't even know how to ask them to come to church. But I know one thing, Jesus is calling me. And I got to do something. 
I got to do something. He's calling me. And I love this because the Bible says that Lazarus had his grave clothes on. He was mummified, wrapped in old stuff, wrapped in old mess, wrapped in an old relationship. It's been over for years, but you're still wrapped up. You're tied in. You still feel the same way about yourself as you did in high school when people used to pick on you and talk about you. You're wrapped up in this old stuff. But the Bible says as Lazarus began to come off, come out, those old clothes started to fall off of him. That old sin started to fall off of him. And behold, all things are now becoming new. And what started out as baby steps turned into big boy steps. And what big boy steps turned into a jog. And a jog turned into a run. And now I am a God chaser because I'm chasing God. I'm chasing the voice. I'm chasing the voice that chased me down and apprehended me. I'm chasing that voice. The one who came to see about me. The one who came to check on me. When everybody else pronounced me dead. Whenever Jesus shows up, it's not a funeral, it's a wedding. Whenever Jesus shows up, it's no longer a funeral, it's a wedding. You got to start inviting Jesus to your funerals. You got to start inviting Jesus to the things you thought were dead in your life. You got to start inviting Jesus to dead dreams and dead things and dead thoughts. You got to invite him because he resurrects the... who I am. No, you no no see 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 you knew the old me. No so see 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 you divorced the old me. Man I really hope that blessed you. I, I, I really hope that you can hear and honor the call that is on your life. Listen, there's somebody watching this video. You're saying, Pastor Dante, I, 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 I hear the call on my life. I want to encourage you, get involved. Get involved somewhere. Find a pastor that you can know and trust, uh, that speaks the word, speaks the gospel from Genesis to Revelation, that doesn't hold anything back from you. And, and, and find a church where people are loving and kind and care about you, genuinely care about you as a person. Uh, if you want to come visit God Chasers Church, we'd love to have you. We love, love, love when people come to our church. God Chasers Church cannot be explained. It can only be experienced. That's what they tell me anyway. So uh, come on out is 4555 Walsham Road in San Antonio, Texas. We love to see you there. Uh, we have 1010 and 1212 service on Sunday, uh, 1010 a.m. and 1212 p.m. And also we have a 7 uh, 17 service on Wednesday nights. And we love you. God bless you.